Hi, everybody. My name's Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. And we thank you very much for being part of our family. We love you all, and we really, really appreciate all the time that you guys spend. We know that your time is extremely valuable, and so we are very happy that you will put your time into the word of Yah, and that is what we are doing today. And we are the people who are what? Any one of you. We believe the laws, statutes, and commandments are for all generations. We believe we should follow them. We believe that they are a guide to our lives and that if we don't follow them, we do not make it into the kingdom. We are punished eternally. Yeah, and who is our Messiah, Cade? Our Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach, the son of Yahuwah. He is not Yahuwah. He is son. He is from, from his spirit. He is from his essence. He is doing his will. He, he came to die for us and he came to show us the Torah and how to live the Torah. Okay, and Eli, um, are the laws nailed to the cross? No. Why? Because uh, Yehoshua himself said they did not come to do away with the Torah and the prophets. Okay, but he, he came, came, to he came to fulfill them, though. Doesn't that mean make them gone or just get rid of them? Can't, like a fix of where people were doing them wrong, basically. Okay, fulfilled. The, the word fulfilled means to make full. Right, and he was fulfilling a prophecy of, like Moses said, there will be another one that comes like me. So he was fulfilling prophecies. Yes, and to fulfill does not mean to abolish. It does not mean that anything's gone. And if you are a lazy person in religion and all you want to do is have a guy tell you what to believe then you're going to be doomed because what scriptures say is contrary to what all of the people in the pulpits say. In fact, the people in the pulpits are worshiping in a house made by man and our creator is not in that house made of man, especially worshiping on the wrong day. And so here we are. Um, we are into the book of Shimuel. And before that, let me go over. This is Yah's scriptures. Now Yah's scriptures had a massive setback yesterday because we had to fire after we were just about to have deliver our books and so Miss Nicole raged against the machine she fought the good fight and um, she fought the Indians and we are getting a refund from from printer one and we are going to be sending it off to printer two and first and foremost we want to apologize for this um, it was all hunky-dory everything was supposed to be really really good and all up until yesterday when uh, we finally broke the camel's back and figured out that it wasn't going to happen like we thought it was going to happen. Um, and so this is it. We are about 65 days beyond what we are, what we were expecting. We we're expecting um, February, late February or early March. That is what we've been hoping for for months on end. And um, just like bad business people, the Indians did not uh, fulfill their side of the duties when they were supposed to. And uh, We've, we've shipped off to the next people. And so, guys, these are still pre-ordering these. Um, we sent out an email. If anybody wants a refund from these, they do not want to wait in line. That's absolutely, uh, it's, it's all there. The money's all right there. We can refund every single person right now if you guys wanted to. If you guys want to wait, um, we are, like I said before, about 60, 65 days out is what we expect at this point. And so we are working very hard and very diligently on this. And so Yah's scriptures is the greatest translation of scriptures ever, ever delivered in English. And it has all of the, our creator's name, his son, everything has been completely restored. And so guys, the free version of this, absolutely free, hundred percent free PDF is right here. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of downloads every single month. We've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of free downloads every single month. It is a very, very popular PDF. Many, many people are reading from it. The eSword is available right here, version 1.04. You guys can get it on your phones. You can get it on any of this stuff. And if you guys would like to purchase any of these books on Amazon, they are available right now. We, links are in the description below. And every single 100% of all these profits go to help prisoners. And that is what Boss Clan does. Boss Clan helps the prisoners we don't have much of a ministry but what we are attempting to do is to build a prisoner ministry because we love our brothers and sisters in, in chains we love them and we know that they made some tremendously bad mistakes and they have now paying for it and now that they are paying for it we want to be there with them as they are growing and as they are running through the darkness because being in chains is a very, very bad thing, especially in the United States. The prison system is incredible. One out of three people have been in jail in the United States of America. It is the most jailed place anywhere. And this is where enormous amounts of brothers and sisters in chains are seeking Yah. And you guys would be just 
amazed with the kind of letters that we see coming out of the prisons of these brothers that are deep into Torah, that are deep into Yah's ways, and they have questions, and now they have scriptures, and we've been able to deliver most, everybody, everybody who's ever sent for a Bible, we've been able to, to deliver a Bible to them. And so this is what we're trying to continue on with Yah's scriptures. Even though we are set back, we are not defeated, and we will never quit, and we will not quit up until the books have been delivered. Okay, guys, Shemuel, chapter 10 is what we are on. Anybody um, anybody who remembers anything prior to this, Cade, probably not, Jade. Cade, do you remember what happened to say? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, buddy. I didn't mean to offend you. You look a little offended there. I didn't know if you were awake or asleep. Were you awake? Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let's go. What do you got? What's just uh, So, last time that happened was that once the uh, art came back, everybody celebrated, they put in, put in a dude's house, and then Yisrael was like, we want a king. We want to be a king because Samuel was ruling over the people. He was giving them advice. He was advising them. He was basically running show. He was basically a new Moses, a little Moses now running around his little, little villages. Now, like, give us a king. We want us to be like the rest of the nations. And he's like, that's a bad idea. That's a bad idea. And Yahuwah said, do it. Let him have it. But here's the thing. You're, all, your, all your kids are going to be slaves to these people. All your animals are going to be slaves to these people. So you won't own your own land. You won't own anything. It was you're basically going to be under oppression of these kings. They said, that's fine. Let's do it. So, and a reason they wanted the king was because uh, Shemuel's son, they were doing pretty much the thing. son was doing, they were doing evil in the sight of Yahuwah. And the people saw it and they are like, there's no one after you that's going to take care of us, so we'll give us a king to take care of us. So we'll fight our battles because your kids won't follow what you do. Yep, and so tell me the story of where we are at today because we're about to have a king anointed. So How did, who found what? Shaul, and this isn't Shaul from the tent, this is Shaul from the Is this a Shaul that's freed us from the, the laws of God? No. This, Basically, oh. he's this big, strapping dude. He's like, a, he's like a head taller than everyone else, so. He, Prince he was, Charming. Yeah, he was sent out to find his father's cows with one of the servants of hey, his cows? father. It was his uh, uh, donkeys. Donkeys, yeah. Donkeys, yeah. Donkeys, well, one of the animals. The animals all ran away. And they had to go find them. So they ended up in this little town, and they said, let's go Let's go find him. Let's go talk to the seer. And Samuel was there, and he said that his animals already returned. Don't worry about it. It's all good. But then he's going to be the king. You know, that reminds me of all the times our stupid cows run away. Maybe when right? Saul's, 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 ox, Saul's donkeys ran away. He's probably, I'm so sick of these donkeys. Why don't we just get rid of these daggum donkeys? Unfortunately for us, we don't have a seer we can go ask. Yeah, we don't have a seer we can go ask. Yeah, king. Yeah, we, I, don't, I don't know so much we want. We do have, a, we have our, our Elohim Most High. I mean, that's, a, that's as big a seer you can find. I mean, he could, he could tell us the future, the past, the present, everything. <clears throat> it's all ready to roll. Okay, so here we are. We are at the the doorstep of Yisrael's very first king, uh, self-appointed king. Well, not self-appointed, but like uh, desired king. Okay, 10. And Shimeel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because Yahuwah has anointed you leader over his inheritance? When you leave me today, you shall find two men by Rachel's tomb in the border of Benjamin at Zelech. And they shall say to you, the donkeys which you went to look for have been found. And see, your father has left the matters of the donkeys and is worrying about you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Go ahead. This is one of these hands of our creator moments, right? Why did the donkeys run away? Why do our cows always run away? Is there a better purpose? Does our creator have something no, better? No, there's no purpose for our cows. There's, no, there's, there's, there's bad. There's just bad there's cows. There's bad. They, I mean, you've you've almost died over it. Eli has almost died over them before. Literally, um, you literally almost lost your life. What? How many? What? Three months ago, uh, searching for these daggum cows. We 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 say every time one of you guys almost dies, we got to get rid of the cows. But it's your poor Miss Nicole. It's poor mom. She loves the cows, and she gets this little tear in her eye every time that we're trying to get rid of these cows. Now, do you think um, Saul's uh, mom loved the, the donkeys and was like, just, just love the donkeys, but Saul had to do it, or is this a different story? I don't know. It's different? Oh, fine. All right. Miss Nicole's over here. She, she's disputing this entire conversation. Okay. Are you looking up when Kate almost died? Yeah. Do we have the time when Eli almost died? Or the time Jade almost died? It's the caterpillars? What? The caterpillars that put you guys into a coma. That was years ago. Yeah. How could you forget those? Last year. Yeah, it was last year. Usually. Oh, man. Years ago. No, I was like... Was like years ago. Like, you haven't been out for Miss, years. Miss Nicole, <laughs> mom has a log. She's it's over there looking... She's looking... Oh, last year? It, November when Caden fell into... Water fist. No, Too the, much, she almost died like, you know, a couple the months ago. The caterpillars were like years ago. Like, uh, you, baby. Yeah, yeah, but 
you guys have all been owned by the Caterpillars as of late. All right, we're falling, falling off track here. All right, anyway, Mr. Cole, thanks for the, the help. I'll see you. Okay, now, here we go. Um, when you leave me today, you shall find two men by Rachel's tomb at the border of Benjamin at Zelok, and they shall say to you, the donkeys which you went to look for have been found. And see, your father has left the matters of the donkeys and is worrying about you, saying, what shall I do for my son? And you shall pass on from there and beyond and shall come to the terebinth tree of Tabor. And three men going up to Elohim at Bet-El shall find you there, one bearing three young goats, another bearing three loaves of bread, and another bearing a skin of wine. And they shall greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall accept from their hand. And after that, go to the hill of Elohim, where the Pelashite watch post is, and it shall be, when you have come there to the city, that you shall meet a group of Nebian coming down from the high place, with a stringed instrument, and a tambourine, and a flute, and a lyre before them, and they nabi. And the Ruach of Yahuwah shall come upon you, and you shall nabi with them, and be turned into another man. Well, man, what's this talking about? What is this? Shaul's going to... Shaul's going to all of a sudden, like, what? Go profit. Yes, yeah, go somewhere else. Okay, seven. And it shall be, when these size, signs come to you, do for yourself as your hands finds to do, for Elohim is with you. And you shall go down before me to Gilgal, and see, I am coming down to down to you to slaughter burnt offerings and make peace offerings. Wait seven days till I come to you. Then I shall make known to you what you should do. And it came to be when he had turned his back to go from Shimuel, that Elohim gave him another heart. And all those signs came on that day. And they came there to the hill and saw a group of Nebim to meet him. And the Ruach of Elohim came upon him and the Nabu, and he Nabu in their midst. And it came to be all who knew him formerly looked and saw that he Nabu among the Nebim. So the people said to each other, what is this that has come upon the son of Kish? Is Shaul also among the Nebim? And a man there answered and said, and who is their father? That is why it became a proverb. Is Shaul among the Nebim? So why is this? Why is that the thing? That uh, um, probably because this dude is known for being like a farmer dude, and it's like oh, all of a sudden he starts like prophesying. It's like oh, is Shaul also a prophet now? Yeah, very interesting. Thirteen. And when he stopped Naba, he went up to the high place, and the uncle of Shaul asked him and his servant, "Where did you go?" And he said, "To look for the donkeys." And when we saw they were nowhere to be found, we went to Shimuel, and the uncle of Shaul said. Please inform me what Shemuel said to you. <clears throat> and Shaul said to his uncle, he informed us plainly that the donkeys had been found, but he did not disclose to him about the matter of the rain, what Shemuel had said. Now, why do you guys suppose that he didn't say anything? Why, why didn't he say anything to his uncle? Probably, why do you only talk about the, the he's donkeys? He's probably still processing that himself. He's not sure to say, you know, if he says this, you know, they might try to keep him there or they might try to dispute it, be like, you're not ready to be a king or something like that. What so, do you think would happen if Eli all of a sudden got the, the word or something and came out and uh, he, he was told by Yah that he had to be king over us? What do you think everyone would do in the house? Uh, well, I guess we got to make start with protecting him because if people know he's going to become Wait, a yeah, king. Yeah, who, 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 we're just going to go with what he says? How do we know if Yah said this? Um, well, this guy's gonna be king over. He's the he's the he used to be the smallest among us, and now he's like yeah. I guess the I guess, fed it's giant. Like, I guess I guess like like a, someone of Yah, right? Because you know Samuel was like renowned for being Yah's dude, his right hand man at this time. All right, so we're not gonna let Eli be king over us. I, mean, I guess right. depends it's who the, says it. I guess. So what are you gonna do? If, if he's just some random guy in the streets, like are you guys oh, gonna treat king. your king with more respect than you do your brother? Hmm. You, you, like, you would have carte blanche. You, you guys wouldn't be able to, to like mess with him. The, the brothers of destruction wouldn't be able to like cause chaos to each other. Man, that would be boring, huh, Shug? Unlimited power. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. All right, King Eli. Uh, That's Maybe why not. he's not king. That's why he's not king. All yep, right. Nope. Back, back to the greenhouse for you, son. Keep clinging. Okay. All right. 17. And Shimei all called the people together to Yahuwah at Mitzvah and said to the children of Yisrael, Thus said Yahuwah, the Elohim of Yisrael, I have brought Yisrael up out of Mitzrayim and delivered you from the hand of the Mitzrites and from the hand of all reigns and from those who oppressed you. And today you have rejected your Elohim, who himself saved you out of all your evils and your distresses. <clears throat> and you have said to him, no, but appoint a sovereign over us. And now present yourselves before Yahuwah by your tribes and by your clans. And Shimeel brought near all the tribes of Yisrael and the tribe of Benjamin was taken. Then he brought near the tribe of Benjamin by their clans, and the clan of Matri was taken, and Shaul, son of Kish, was taken. And they sought him, he could not be found. 
And they asked again of Yahuwah, has the man come here yet? And Yahuwah answered, see, he is hidden by the baggage. Okay, so uh, Shaul is... He's like uh, crouching down, hiding between luggage. He's <laughs> a giant, right? One foot above anyone else is like hiding out there, doesn't want to deal with any of this. Um, why do you think he's hiding? Um, probably because he's scared, probably really nervous. You know, you're about to be announced the first king in Israel. That's, pr- that's probably pretty nerve-wracking. Hey, what, what would you guys say? I'm like, Eli was pronounced king. You guys know all his uh, his stuff, you know, all his stuff. Where you're going to serve that king. That's all his, he's probably thinking of his brothers. I grew up with these guys. I mean, everybody knows who Shaul is. Um, they know. I mean, yeah, he's probably scared of a lot of people who probably try to like, kill him because they don't want him. They don't want Saul over them. So yeah. he's probably, probably, probably nervous. All right, 23. And they ran and brought him from there. And he stood in the midst of the people, and he was taller than any of the people, from his shoulders and upwards. And Shimeo said to all the people, so, okay, so the shoulders and upwards, are we, does he have like a squatty body but a really high uppers? Is that I what we're talking about? I think his shoulders, like the, the, the top of their heads. Uh-huh. I think he just has really tall shoulders. <laughs> He's like one of those cartoon guys with the really long legs. See, Eli has really long legs. He looks like one of those egg cartoons with like the stick legs and then like the little oval egg thing at the top. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Eli, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Poor guys. All right. Um, and Jim, you all said to all the people, do you see him who Yahoo has chosen? And there is no one like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, let the sovereign live. Now, if he was like, Four foot two? Do you think this would be the same thing, or this no, this dude I, I had to be like? I don't know. They're, they're, he's just king because he's tall. He's he was got built lucky. for these times. You know what I was going back to was the the the, the part where Yah made all the donkeys disappear just to get Shaul and his his dude out, just to get this appointment with Shimuel. That is the hand of our Creator that does mysterious stuff. In which I was actually going with our cows because we've had some pretty. Uh, uh, I would say religious moments after our cows and when everyone is almost nearly dying, we're always thinking, yeah, that everyone's alive. So anyway, yeah, I don't know if this would work if he's four foot two. Um, and Shimuel declared to the people the rulings of the reign and wrote it in a book and placed it before Yahuwah. And Shimuel sent all the people away, each to his house. And Shaul went to his house too, to Giba. And with him went brave men whose hearts Elohim had touched. But the sons of Belial said, what, does this one save us? And they despised him and brought him no presents, but he kept silent. All right, no presents from the sons of Belial. They did not like uh, Shaul. Yep, all right. So it's not yet. I'm sure it's time to be excited by everyone. Not everyone's going to want that person as their king. They probably have someone in mind as they want for their king. Yeah, absolutely. All right, folks. I think that's it. Um, everybody, we thank you guys very, very much for reading with us. We hope that you guys have a wonderful day. We hope you're reading your Bibles. We hope that you guys are in Yah's. Yah's uh, company calendar. I hope that you guys are all part of this and that you are seeking him where he's able to be found. And that is it for us. Much love. All right. Shalom.